The United Arab Emirates is very proud of its Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest skyscraper. 164 floors and 828 meters, although its rooms can accommodate only 2,000 people. And meanwhile, these people could be resettled in just 20 of these five-story block buildings from Eastern Europe. Moreover, a block superbuilding made up of them will occupy 10 times less area than the foundation of the Burj Khalifa. The conditions, of course, are not hotel-like, but the optimization is apparent. So why not move all of humanity into one colossal building? In this video, you'll find out what town consists of just one building? Why did the Nazis want to build a massive dome with artificial clouds? And can all of humanity really live in one building? Which famous residential buildings are the most capacious? This is Whittier, Alaska. And yes, the whole town fits in this photo. The 14-story building Begich Towers is home to the entire population of Whittier, and people don't even have to go out. A store, a post office, a city council, and even a church are all also here. Just take the elevator and you're there. However, the population of the one-structure town is only 270 people. That's just millions of a percent of the 8 billion population of Earth. Another structure is this living wall erected in the Swiss town of Bernier in the 60s. The building, 12 to 14 stories high, stretches over a kilometer. This living wall contains 2,780 apartments and more than 6,000 people living in them. It's one-fifth of the entire town's population, so its density rivals that of Manhattan. And only thanks to Switzerland's general high living standards did the building not become the world's largest ghetto. But to accommodate all of the planet's inhabitants, we need 1,300,000 of these living walls. It's too much, so we require a different approach. This incredibly ambitious project, the Shimizu Pyramid, is planned to be erected in Tokyo Bay within the next 100 years. At its top, it'll reach a height of 2 kilometers, and that's two and a half times higher than the Burj Khalifa. But due to the pyramid shape, the building's capacity will be hundreds of times bigger. So it'll fit everything necessary for a comfortable life for one million people. The problem is that to accommodate all of humanity, we'd need to find plots for a thousand such pyramids, which would be one and a half times the size of Switzerland. Alas, today's technology so far don't allow us to build even one such structure. So let's make it easier for now. Which non-residential buildings can house the maximum number of people? This is the Narendra Modi Stadium in Ahmedabad, India. Its area is six times bigger than any Olympic stadium, and its stands can fit up to 132,000 spectators. And it's all for hosting matches of India's most popular game, cricket. Larger buildings for public gatherings exist only as projects. After their victory, the Nazis planned to build a Volkshalle in Berlin, about 300 meters high. That's one-third the height of the Burj Khalifa. 180,000 people could simultaneously listen to the Führer's fiery speeches under a gigantic dome. Moreover, artificial clouds would have formed beneath its dome during a speech due to all the moisture from spectators' breath. But the Volkshalle project remained just on paper. And besides, tens of thousands of such gigantic constructions would be needed to accommodate all of humanity. Is there something even larger? The largest non-residential building on Earth is the Boeing Everett Aircraft Factory in Washington State. Its size is only slightly larger than the foundation of the Burj Khalifa. But there's another important thing. With a height somewhat taller than that five-story building from Eastern Europe, the Boeing Everett building has a volume of 13,385,000 cubic meters. Also, the architects calculated that there could be a maximum of six people close to each other in one cubic meter of any building. 
As a result, this gigantic factory could accommodate more than 80,300,000 people breathing down each other's necks, and very unhappy people at that. And that's only a quarter of the U.S. population, and just over a percent of the world's population. Well, looks like I have to take things into my own hands. What will a building that can accommodate all 8 billion people be like? Actually, we are surprisingly compact. If all the planet's inhabitants were combined into a giant cube of flesh, blood, and bones, the cube would rise only 805 meters above the ground. It wouldn't even reach the top of the Burj Khalifa. But such a form of existence could suit only the monster from the movie The Thing. If we, as we did at the Boeing Everett factory, simply placed 8 billion people back to back, we'd need a cubic mega building like this. Its height would be only 3.64 kilometers. From an engineering standpoint, it would be more complicated than the Shimizu Pyramid. But oddly enough, this mega cube could easily fit in Manhattan. Actually, the huddled dwellers of such a building are unlikely to be able to take more than a couple of hours in it. So let's reduce the population density to a suitable level. Just like that in a modest five-story building with a hundred dwellers in Eastern Europe. Such a residential mega cube of 2,800 stories with a height of almost 11 kilometers would reach the stratosphere. It'll be taller than Everest and reach nearly the maximum flight altitude of passenger planes. Nevertheless, we could easily find a plot for constructing such a large building in New York, occupying only one-sixth of the total area of the metropolis. So, as soon as the necessary technologies appear, will we move into such a home and live cheerfully like one big happy family? Alas, not everything is so rosy. What will life in one mega-building for all of humanity be like? With this density, individual countries will turn into sections of stories. The population of Asia will occupy 1,680 stories. That's 60% of the building. Of these, China and India will occupy about 525 stories, whereas the entire population of the Western world from the US and the European Union will require half the space, only 274 stories. Jamaica will be the most convenient. With a population of about 3 million people, it'll take up precisely one story. But Jamaicans, like all dwellers of the mega-building, won't have an opportunity to chill out with reggae in the old-fashioned way. People will constantly be under enormous stress from such a population density. Ask any New Yorker. And even if we fit all the institutions and jobs inside a mega-building, like in Whittier, the commute would still be hell. The closer an apartment to the elevator or other transportation, the more expensive it'll be, leading to colossal inequality on a scale humanity has never seen before. Just remember the Snowpiercer movie, where people on the same train were either terribly poor or disgustingly rich. And we didn't even start talking about the logistics of food and everything else we'd need. The weird, unobvious consequences of living in a mega-building were described by science fiction writer Robert Silverberg in his novel The World Inside in 1970. The dwellers of his thousand-story skyscraper were forced to share everything, including husbands and wives. Sexual life began at the age of 12. For the slightest offense, a person was thrown down the chute, where their bodies make fuel for the building. After all, the most terrible feature of the life of all people in one mega-building was that no one human life was worth anything at all. So, for all the ambitiousness of the mega-building as an architectural project, it would be the worst way to resettle humanity. Moreover, in this case, people would be dumber than dinosaurs to all live in one place. The dinosaurs lived all over the Earth and were killed by the hit of a giant asteroid. And in a world with a human mega-building, a small meteorite hit would be enough to destroy us all at once. Well, on the other hand, the Earth's ecology would return to normal before the arrival of the next, more intelligent species. 
But there is another apocalyptic scenario we should think about. Check out this video and find out what would happen if there were one nonillion people on Earth. Is overpopulation a real threat to humanity?